If you're new to SharePoint within your organization, you might find it difficult to find what you're looking for or find what people have shared with you. This video is focused on trying to give you the tools you need to have some basic understanding of where you can go to find the content in SharePoint that's been shared with you. We're gonna talk about a few different things today, including the SharePoint start page, the anatomy of a site, lists and libraries, and then some other just quick pointers that might, you might find interesting when using SharePoint. When you start to use SharePoint, one of the first things you'll want to try to use is the SharePoint start page. You can get to the SharePoint start page by using the waffle and clicking on the SharePoint logo. Once you're on the start page, you're gonna notice a bunch of content that's pulled from across SharePoint within your organization. So this content is targeted for you, so it's things that you have access to, and Microsoft thinks would be useful for you to look at. So let's talk about the first section, which is called News from Sites. This is gonna be news articles from any of the sites that you have access to that have happened recently or that Microsoft thinks would be useful to you. You can again look at, uh, click over here to see all of the news from all sites, or you can, on a particular news article that you might be interested in, select it to save it for later. Right below news from sites, you'll also see frequent sites. This is gonna show you sites that you go to on a regular basis. The algorithm to show these sites is again controlled by Microsoft, so you're not gonna see specific things that you want to see. You're gonna see things that Microsoft thinks that you should see based on how many sites that you look at. If you're looking for a way to create your own personalized list of sites that you want to have access to, you should really use the follow option. So this star button in any of these frequented sites, if I turn that on, so if I select one of them, that's gonna follow that site and then over in the left-hand side in this following section, you're gonna be able to see that list for all of the sites that you follow. Again, it's a really great way for you to create a personalized list of sites that you want to be, have it in a quick link. The last thing I wanna talk about on this page would be things on the left-hand side here. In addition to the following, you're also gonna see a recents, which is gonna be similar to the frequent sites, so it's gonna be recent sites that you accessed. Saved for later, which is again based on the uh, options from the news sites. So if you've uh, bookmarked, click this bookmark link or the saved items uh, uh, icon on the news, you're gonna see that in the saved for later. And then lastly, you're gonna see this featured link section. The featured link section for me doesn't have anything right now, but this would be links that would be added by your administrators. So an administrator within your tenant could add a link to this featured links and then everybody in your tenant is gonna see those links. Now that we've talked about all the content for the start page, I do wanna make note of this all the way onto the left side, this application bar that's here. This is something you're gonna see ubiquitous across all the pages we're gonna go through. This allows quick access to very similar things to what is on the start page. So again, at the very top, you're gonna see um, the start page. So this will take you right back to the start page. You've got my sites, which shows you, again, sites that you frequent or follow, news that you've tagged or is recommended for you, files, so these are my files that are related to me, and then lists that are related to me. So this content is gonna be able, available on every single site or every single page we go to throughout this video. If you wanna learn more about the app bar, including how to configure it, we have another video that we created and it's in the description below. Now that we've shown you how to find sites that you have access to in SharePoint, I wanna show you a little bit about what makes up a site. So this site that I'm going to right now is a communication site and you can see here, it has a couple different uh, components to it. So the first thing is we have navigation elements. So you'll notice at the top here, we have engineering, marketing, customer service. These are high level or hub site navigation. So these would be consistent across maybe multiple sites that are all within the same hub. Below it, we have navigation that is more dedicated to the content on this page and in this particular site. So we have start here, who we are, and you can see that some of them have drop down navigation in, as well. But this is all for navigating two pages within the site. In addition to navigation, we also have content. So everything that's below this white bar is all content on this particular page. 
So you'll see different content within that same pane, but notice the navigation is consistent both at the top level, so the hub navigation and the site navigation will stay the same. So let's talk about what can be in the content area of a page. You can have all sorts of things. As you can see here, we have images, but you can have texts, YouTube videos, you can have documents, basically anything you might need to display or show to a user, you can put into the content area of a page. While pages are an important part of SharePoint, there are a couple of their features that are really important to you specifically lists and libraries. A library in SharePoint is a place where you can store files and metadata associated with those files so that users can download, view, browse that content. Lists is the same thing, except for it has no file associated to it. So from a list perspective, the data that you care about is the actual list content or the metadata. So in this example, you can see the new hire checklist has things like a title, a task name, when it, was, when it should be completed, notes, resources. Those are all metadata items, and that's the only information that you have about a list item. In the case of a library, you have files, which have, by default, things like modified by, created by, created on, but you can add your own metadata columns to a library, and then every file would have that extra data. As an example, in a library, I could add a column for department and be able to distinguish between files associated with HR, as an example, or sales. So now there's two more things that I'd like you to know about sites. The first one is that it's fully responsive. So if I adjust the screen size for this page, you're going to see the content react to what I'm doing. And so you'll notice things don't show up in the same, same location. In addition, the content looks different. So notice at this screen resolution, the app bar shows up on the right, but some of the navigation has changed and it's located now in a sub ellipsis. Uh, if I make it even smaller, you can simulate doing mobile, having mobile access to this, and you're gonna see that the app bar moved to the bottom and everything is moved to one column rather than having multiple columns for, for content. So just remember, SharePoint sites are fully responsive. They'll work on a mobile device or on a desktop. The second thing I wanna talk about is the way that the site looks depending on the access that you have. So in my case, what I'm showing you here, I'm actually an owner of this site and you see some extra stuff. So you see this edit link, which allows you to edit navigation in both the navigation locations. You're seeing access to analytics, editing the page, publishing the page, sharing. All of these things won't show up for users who don't have access to it. So remember, the page is gonna look different depending on the access level that you have to the page. Now that we've covered the anatomy of a site, what if I'm looking to find content on the site that maybe isn't on a page, or maybe I just wanna browse what's going on on that site? That's available to you using something called site contents. So if you, again, on all of these sites, if you click on the gear and click on site contents, you're gonna see all of the content that's available to you within this site. So this will give you access to all of the lists, all the libraries. If there's any subsites to that site, they're all gonna be available from this site contents. And if you click on one, you're gonna kinda see the behind the scenes page that gives you access to all of that content. If you're not looking to browse content on the site and you just wanna find something really quick, I always look to use the SharePoint search bar. The SharePoint search bar allows you to search for anything within the site and get quick access to it. If I'm looking for a page like Our Story, I can search for Our Story and it'll give you a bunch of options that you can select from that match that criteria. So try search if you aren't sure where you to look for something and you just know what you're looking for. So the last thing I wanna talk about is the different sites that you can use within SharePoint. The primary two are a communication site and a collaboration site. What we've been looking at for most of the video has been a communication site, which is dedicated to communicating data from a small group of people out to a larger audience. And it really has a focus on the content. So if I scroll down here, the content is almost full widescreen. You've got beautiful images. The text is the primary uh, focus, the text and the images. In a collaboration site, you're gonna see things a little bit differently. You're gonna, number one, see the navigation is different. So on the left-hand side, you're gonna find the same kind of navigation that you saw at the top. 
So you're gonna see home, conversations, documents, and notice that the navigation elements are more content focused. So the documents, as an example, takes you directly to a, the document library. So you're gonna see the, immediately see the back end page for those documents by clicking on that. Instead of in the communication site, you have content that's going to take you to ad additional content pages that have information. So for example, if I click on meeting uh, uh, employee resources, you're gonna see a beautiful page that's content focused to kind of learn about resources available to you. Whereas everything in a collaboration site is really focused on giving you direct quick access to documents, lists, the content itself. It doesn't have a lot of extra fluff or extra content around it. So again, a communication site is really focused on delivering content from a small group of people to a wide audience. Collaboration sites, everyone that's joining that site, it, the intent is that they're collaborating on content in that site. That's all the content I have to introduce you to SharePoint. Hopefully, I've given you a few pointers in where you can go to find content in your organization's SharePoint site. If you think that there's something I missed, please feel free to comment down below so we can include it in our next video. And before you go, make sure you go down to the bottom and do all the like and subscribe stuff, and I'll see you in the next video.